Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We greet you today. In the name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he's our joy, he's our peace. Thank you for joining us tonight and allowing us to come inside your homes. We are excited about the lesson tonight. It's one that we all need uh, to feed our souls. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your teachings, your teaching, and your. And we thank you for those you anointed to teach us, to make us good students tonight. Help us to hear your voice. Lord, we need to grow. You know the areas where we need to grow in. And we trust you to feed us and teach us in those areas so we can become all that you want us to be and fulfill your purpose for our life in this generation. Amen. Tonight's lesson is how to be blessed by your Bible. In America, you see Bibles everywhere. You can't, you can't, there's, 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 there's not many places, even in grocery stores, there's Bibles, bookstores, motel rooms, everywhere. They are available in all sizes, all shapes translations, versions. You know, you have all kinds of bounds and paperbacks and leather, leatherbacks. And, and every year the Bible outsells every other major bestseller. Last year there were 500 million Bibles published in the world. 18,000 different languages. Yeah. We, we, are, we are gluttons with the Word. The Word of God is on the airways, on the radios, on TVs, books and magazines, on the TV, and books and magazines. And it's everywhere. Yet millions of people still miss the blessing of, of the Bible. Why? Because it's not automatic. The Bible is a book of blessing. Blessings after blessing. It promises the comfort, the strength, to give us hope, give us wisdom, give us joy, give us power, give us purpose. Just because you have a Bible doesn't mean you're going to get the benefit from it. James being his practical, practical self. And this lesson tonight gives us three steps on how to bless, be blessed by your Bible. James, our text tonight is James 1, chapter 1, verses 9 through 27. James chapter 1, verses 9 through 27. See the man, verse 25, the man who looks intently in the to the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard by doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. The Bible is called the perfect law because it's exactly what I need. It, it promises freedom and blessing. Number one, if I want to be blessed by my Bible, I must receive God's word, verses 19 through 21 of James chapter 1. Accept the word planted in you, verse 21. Circle that in your Bible, the word accept. This word in the Greek is a hospitality term, which literally, literally means to welcome. Come on in. If we're going to be blessed by the word of God, First, we must welcome the word into our lives. We must be receptive. Matthew 13, 1 and 9, 18, 23. First Peter 1, 23. James gives us an illustration. James gives us an illustration. He says it's planted in you. He gives the illustration of a gardener in the sea. The Bible all through scripture compares itself to a seed. How is it you can take 
the same two seeds, plant, planting them in a different location and get different fruit, crops, fruit. The soil is prepared and the other is not. Yeah, you, you, how said you can place them in the same soil and nothing comes up for one and something comes up for the other. One, one, one gives a crop and the one does not. Because they have not received the God's word. Then that's some attitudes causing, causes good reception. Jesus says you need to receive the word with, with the right attitude. He gives us four attitudes. You need to, to be blessed by the word. They are hearing they are hearing aids. First of all, he says, be careful, verse 19a. I must, be, I must have a careful attitude. Be quick to listen, slow to speak. Give it your full attention. Be alert. Don't miss it. When I'm talking, when I'm talking, I'm, 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 I'm not listening. God gave us two ears and one mouth. So we ought to listen twice as much as we talk. Be careful in your attitude. Be ready. Be intent. Be ready. Be receptive. God's word. Be receptive of God's word. Be careful. Then attitude for good reception. Be careful, be calm. And slow to become angry, he says. Relax your attitude. And relaxing your attitude increases your receptivity. If you relax, people can communicate with you more. We don't hear much when we are angry at somebody upset or bitter, resentful. You know, the barriers to keep us from hearing God's word. And then be clean. Before you can plant the seed, you need to do a little weeding. Notice what he says, get rid of all moral filth, filth and the evil that is so prevalent. The word filth, he says, you need to get rid of. It's actually the Greek word that means earwax. When you have a sin in your life, it blocks you're hearing. You have sin in your life. It prevents God's word from getting to your heart. Then be compliant. Be teachable. Yield to the word. Be humble. Willing to change, he says. Humbly accept the word planted in you. Don't, don't act like you know it all. If you, if you know it all, then God's word can't get through to you. Pray. I do what you need to do in my life. And then, number one, I must receive God's word. Number two, I must reflect on God's word. Verse 23, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at it, looks at his face in the mirror. After looking at himself, listen, he immediately goes away and forgets what he, what he looks like. God's word is like a mirror. Jesus uses the purpose of a, of a mirror is, is, to, is to evaluate yourself. We, we look in a mirror to assess damage from, from the night before. Then we, then we do something about it. The mirror reflects what I'm like on the outside. God's word reflects what I'm like on the inside. Have you ever seen yourself in the Bible? Reading it and meditating on it, reflecting on it, and you saw what you look like? Hebrew says God's word detects the thoughts and intents and motives and desires of the heart. Lots of people don't read the Bible because they're afraid, I'm willing. To see themselves as they really are. James gives us three ways to reflect on, on the word of God. He says, re read it. First of all, he's actually talking more about research than he is reading, investigating the word. Look in the Greek means to snoop down and gaze in. It's the word used when Peter 
Remember when Peter went to that empty tomb on that resurrection Sunday when he stooped down? The Bible says the man who looks intently into the perfect law. He investigates two ways you can look at a, look at a mirror. You can gaze at it or you can glance at it. You glance at it immediately and walk away. You forget what you've seen. Give God Benefit of the doubt when you read his word and know that he's showing you yourself. And then number two, review it. Verse 25. And continue to do so. That means over and over and over, the Bible calls this meditation. It means to think seriously about some, some of the things you read over and over. If you know how to wear it, then you know how to meditate. You take the negative idea and you think over and over, think it over and over and over in your mind where you take the, the, the good idea, the positive, and you think it over and over in your mind, review it. It's called meditation. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you're truly my disciples. Read it, review it. And the outline it gives you, we give you each week and not so that you can you know, keep up with me. It's, it's so you can review it when you go home. Do the work that God says. God wants you to be blessed by the word. Review it. You know, every businessman ought to Memorize Joshua 1 and 8. If you do one thing, God promises to bless you with success. That promise is if you meditate on his word. Some people are more concerned about the sports page, the sports page than they are about the Bible. Then remember it, not forgetting what you have, what he had what he has heard. Nothing will do more for you spiritually in your life than devoting that habit of memorizing scripture. The word, he says, I, I've hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you, the writer says. We remember what's important to us. Memorize God's word. If you want to be blessed by it, memorize it. Take notes, write things down. Hebrews 2 and 1 says, if you value God's word, you're going to Write it down. Take, no, take notes on it. Then number three, I must respond to God's word. I must do something about it. Act on it. Live it. Practice it. Do what it says. What good is a mirror if you look at it and don't do anything about it? The word listen in the Greek the word for, is a word for audit. Do an audit. Verse 22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. We must respond to the word. Let it change us. If you come to church and walk, walk in and you hear the word and walk out with no intentions of being changed, James says it's self-deception. The word should build character. The man who put the law into practice wins true happiness. Verse 25, Philip's translation. In Matthew 7, Jesus tells the story of a wise and foolish builder. A foolish builder built on sand. He's like the guy who hears the word of God and doesn't hear what it says. And the wise man is the one who hears and then goes out and makes an honest attempt to put it into his life, put it into practice. Practice it, James says. James concludes this section with three examples of, of practicing the word. He covers uh, each of these in, in the rest of the book, so we will be back. So, so we will be back by them. So our, so our life and our and our, our relationship with, with God and. And, and his word will make us strong. One, way, one of the ways you can know you are a doer of the word is that you have control of your mouth. 
If anyone considers himself religious and does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. You have a caring heart, religion, that, 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 that the Father accepts as faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. Help the helpless. You have a social concern. You care in your heart about people. And then you have a clean mind to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. You need spiritual integrity. That's genuine Christianity. Well, we hope and trust that you've been blessed by what we said tonight. But more than that, we hope and trust that you have a relationship with God. If you don't, you can have that tonight. You will never be able to be blessed by your Bible until you give your heart to Jesus Christ. What about you tonight? Are you reading your Bible? Are you getting comfort from the Word? Are you getting peace and strength and love and joy and assurance from God's Word? If not, then you need to start tonight. Somebody, you need to be saved. Somebody, you just need to, to get back to being the, 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 the faithful Christian that you were. Some of you may be doing all the other things, but you're not reading your Bible. Take time to read it. It's God's, it's God's will for your life. You gain wisdom when you do it, and you'll be made the better for it. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and praise you for this time together. We thank you for the word that you've sent forth. We know it won't return to you. Lord, bless those, O oh God, who don't know you in the part of their sins. Help them to accept you tonight. Help them to say these words that I, I confess in my mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart that God is raising from the dead. And you said, you said, I shall be saved. And God, we pray for those who are saints, but yet, God, they've not, read, not made it a practice to read the Bible every day. And meditate. Don't just read, but investigate. Study the Word of God. Find the, the hidden nuggets. Help them to do it. Give them the inspiration. Give them the motivation. But most, most of all, God, give them the love that, 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 that's deep for you. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen and thank God. Remember, you can rise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. We miss you. We love you. We look forward to we'll meet back in this place. But until that time, we'll keep meeting just like this. Have a wonderful night.